Okay, good morning. It's Teresa in Gemma's house. And in this week's video, I'm going to be doing something that I had an idea about a month ago to do. I love to quilt. I love to sew. And in a year and a half, I made more than 35 quilts using my new Baby Lock Jazz 2 quilting sewing machine. <laughs> I free motion quilted a lot of those. So if you're a quilter, you know that those kind of repetitive movements can really mess with your shoulders and your wrists and hands. So I thought that I could make a quilt sitting down comfortably. I'm going to make a quilt out of paper and I'm going to adhere it to this cute tray that I found in Goodwill for $4.69. I think it might be handmade. I'm not sure. I just gave it a fresh coat of paint, but if you didn't want to do a tray, you could also do this project on several other things such as if you have a nice frame that you would like to use for something, you could cut a piece of foam core and do this project on the foam core and then frame it in your nice frame and hang it on the wall. Or you could also do this on a wooden room divider that has wood panels on it. You could do it on that too, that would be really neat. But I like the idea of a tray because I can use it for bringing dishes and food out to my patio when I have my daughters over to eat dinner. Or I could even add a hanger on the back of this and hang it up on the wall like a framed piece. I had also found this smaller tray. It's wooden also. This was at Goodwill. It was two dollars and something, so very affordable. It's really cute. It's more coarse, but the size is much nicer if you just want something small to work with. As for a quilt design, boy, that's really flexible, isn't it? You could use the picture of a quilt pattern that you love and just cut your pieces of paper to match that design. Or you can just make one up on your own, which is what I'm going to do. And that's what I do for all of my quilts. I never use a quilt pattern. Okay, so what I bought at Michael's craft store are these pads of paper. There are 48 sheets. I had a 20% off coupon actually, and it was $8. And if you flip through it, there are some really cute designs in here. The second one, there are some really cute designs in here too. So there are some alternatives to buying these paper pads. You could use wrapping paper or you could use posters. These are large posters and you could cut a lot of different colors and patterns out of just one poster. And these were also $1.25 at the dollar store. So I'm going to use these papers as if they were fabrics and I'm going to piece them together on this tray. Okay, so I went through those two paper pads and I pulled out the ones that I'm most interested in. I'm thinking that I might want to use part of this one as kind of like a, um, a panel that you would put in a quilt. I've never done that in a real quilt, so I want to try it here. In addition to that, I want to figure out some size issues. I really like crystals. So I want to use all of the crystals on this pattern. And luckily in that paper pad, they have three pages of each design. So I'm going to fussy cut these crystals out. 
So I might have to go with a two inch square to fit all of these crystals nicely. So if I make the squares two inches, I think I want to use those as a border for this panel. So I would have to have a multiple of two so that I have enough room in the width and the height to put those two inch squares evenly as a border. So it would have to be a multiple of two. So let's see. So many decisions <laughs> to figure out in advance. Or you could just start cutting and, uh, you know, make it up entirely as you go. I do that with a lot of my quilts. Okay, so this is just a regular small X-Acto knife. I have a new blade in it, so it's nice and sharp. So the width of this, I'm going to go with eight inches wide. And 10 inches high. And I'm going to keep all these scraps, of course, because I can use them for borders and things like that. And I think I'm going to go with this placement. I'm going to use this glue that I got at the dollar store for $1.25. I got two bottles. And I'm just going to use it full strength. And just using a foam brush to smear it around. Okay. So hopefully this glue is as good as a name brand. <laughs> and I'm going to make myself a template to cut these two inch squares since I'm fussy cutting these and I want them to be positioned nicely within a two inch square shape. Okay, so now I have my two inch square template and I can position it and draw some guidelines so I can cut it out. And I'll just do this on each of these crystals that I want to fussy cut. Okay, so I did that quickly, didn't I? <laughs> So I'll of course keep this template. I'm going to mark it as two inches because I'll be reusing this, that's for sure, in cutting other sizes. <laughs> okay, this is cute. I like it already. Okay, I think I am going to use this one. Okay, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to glue these down. And because I'm getting a little bit of space between them, I'm going to start gluing them just right inside the edge of this center panel so that they're all together and I don't get any gaps in between them. Okay, so off camera, I did some more on this. I have one and a half inch by two inch long pieces. They're actually two different designs, but they're so similar that you can't really tell. 
So it looks more like a quilt border than uh, like patchwork. So to make it look more like a quilt, I might add some contrasting, oh my gosh, my dog is running through the house. I might add some contrasting color, thin strips in between these blocks. I'm not sure, I'll play with it as I go. I make this up as I go. And I added a border with this dotted pink pattern. And I cut one inch squares out of a lot of different colors here because I'm going to add them as like a patchwork down here. I'm going to try to have them go from lighter colors to darker colors. So I'll see what I can do. There are two patterns in here, one in here, and one pattern here, and there are two different patterns in the darker ones. And I might add one more for a little more variety, maybe something with pinks in it. Okay, so this is the idea I had. I wanted it to go from more light down, uh, kind of a gradation down to more darker colors, predominantly darker colors. Okay, so this is going pretty quickly. I just pick up a few of these squares and place it up above the position where I took them from. I lift them up with the X-Acto blade because they are so small. And then in that area where I took them off, I squirt some glue, not too much, and then put them back in the same place. Just pressing them down for a few seconds, make sure they stay. And for the most part, they're just exactly side by side, the edges. And they're lining up fairly well. Over on this side, they're just about a sixteenth of an inch too wide, but instead of cutting them, I'm just overlapping them a tiny bit, which is fine. Okay, so I had quite a few of these little one inch square pieces left. So I decided to just use those along the three sides here of the framed center panel. And I like this effect. And another idea is that in these paper pads that I bought, there are some sheets that have these little elements on them and you could cut out some of them and fold them and then you have a nice little gift card or tag that's coordinated with the colors of this if you're giving it as a gift. Okay, so the last step is to add a gloss varnish. And in the past, I have done decoupage projects where I just used glue mixed with some water over the top and it worked great. You could also use Mod Podge. You could also use a Minwax Polycrylic. Uh, it's water-based. And I'm just going to pour it over the piece. It looks like I'm going to finish this bottle almost. And then with a sponge applicator, I'll just smear it all around evenly. I'm also going to add it to the sides 
that I had painted earlier. Okay, that looks good. I'll let that dry. Okay, so just a few things I noticed. After I varnished this with two coats, the first coat I went this way. After it dried, I put another thin coat on that go in this way. You can see some of the striations from the brush strokes of the varnish coat, which doesn't bother me at all. It's just something I'm pointing out. And also, some of these pieces, I hadn't spread the glue to the very edges of the paper when I was gluing them down. So you can actually see the edges of some of these pieces that you can push down on them. They're not going to fall off or anything because of the varnish coat, but you can see some of the edges. So I should have spread the glue evenly underneath each of the pieces. So I'll know that for my next project I do of this. Also, another thing I'll point out is that I'm not so crazy about how thick this pink border is. I had actually cut it this wide to cover both seams of the two pieces that were under it. And I might cut uh, a thin border of a darker color to lay over this one so that this one isn't as thick. I think I'll like that design a little better. Nothing wrong with this one, but you know, I'm just nitpicking my work <laughs> like I sometimes do. And you can layer pieces over top of other pieces as long as you glue them down very well and then varnish over them when everything is dry. Okay, so I'm calling this finished. Not your typical quilt project. I didn't have to sew a stitch. <laughs> so I hope you try this project. It was really a lot of fun. And if you like this video, can I ask you to please give it a thumbs up? That helps my viewership on YouTube a lot, and it helps this video reach more viewers. So thanks for doing that. And until next week, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.